Welcome back to another online Vespers with Atlanta Korean Church on YouTube. I pray that you had a great week and that you'll be blessed by tonight's message. Um, let's go ahead and start with prayer. Our Father in Heaven, thank you so much for uh, being with us this last week and for, for allowing us to come together again, even though it's online, to think about your word and what it means for our lives today. Speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. So tonight's message is the last message on the book of Judges. And, um, and I'm going to try to unpack the situation in the book of Judges in a way that may sound a little um, uh, political in light of um, these, the climate these days. But try to put that all aside and just try to think of the message, what it means for us personally. Because, you know, oftentimes when we talk about politics and things like that, we can make it uh, very theoretical and very um, emotional. But let's think about the, what the Bible is trying to say in, the, in, a, in a personal and um, objective way and so that it, we can, it could help us rather than make us more, um, I guess, more difficult to get along with with other people. So bear with me, and I believe it'll make sense. <clears throat> in, in society, when we face challenges, whether that's racism, police brutality, or etc., we are often divided between two camps. Um, one camp says there are a few bad apples, while the rest is good, while the others say the, the system is broken and it just needs to be thrown out. In the face of police brutality, the country is utterly torn between whether there are just few bad police officers that give a bad rep to other good cops, um, while others say that the, the very idea of police should be eradicated from our society. The former group advocates, while they agree that specific individuals can and should face consequences for what they deserve, they don't think the rest of the good cops should suffer as a result. But the latter strongly advocate for the upheaval of the system itself. Right? They want to erase the very memory of police. They deem the police the enemy of the people, and they are sure that the only way to fix the problem is to not have police at all. They are sure that it isn't a few bad apples, and so they want to get rid of all of the apples. The tribal leaders of Israel would have agreed with the former party. They were sure that if they can get rid of the few bad apples, everything can go back to the way things were. Last sermon, we saw the situation in Israel was really bad, right? They became in practice just like Sodom and Gomorrah. The sins of the people of Gibeah looked just like the, peop the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah, right? They lost even the basic human decencies in the way they treated their visitors, in the Middle East, it is, they, they consider the hospitality experience a ritual. For them, rituals are reserved only for the most sacred traditions. And hospitality, they consider sacred. And so, also another thing is that when guests come into their homes, the Middle Easterners consider that this is an agreement that the host will protect the, the, um, the visitor from harm. You see, the Israelites' leaders, the tribal leaders, were not aware of just how far they had fallen. In Judges 20, we see what they say, and we can get an experience, a window into what they're thinking. I'm reading in verse 12 and 13 of Judges 20. The tribes of Israel sent messengers throughout the tribe of Benjamin, saying, What about this awful crime that was committed among you? Now turn those wicked men of Gibeah over to us so that we may put them to death and purge the evil from Israel. It was obvious that the tribal leaders really believed that by killing the culprits, the few people who did this, they can purge evil from Israel. They really believed that if they can just get rid of the few bad apples, the rest of the city and society will be fine. The few men who had committed this evil act, 
they were the problem. Once they are gone, Israel will be back to its pristine condition. But was that really the case? If it was the case, right? If they were the problem, and by getting rid of them all, Israel like, might be able to make some recovery. But purging evil from Israel was far from the act of killing a few people. For starters, if they were the problems and the rest of the city of Gibeah and the tribe of Benjamin um, were all on the straight and narrow, we wouldn't find them acting in the following way. But the Benjaminites would not listen to their fellow Israelites. From their towns, they came together at Gibeah to fight against the Israelites. The situation, this, this specific situation, could have been resolved had it been a problem of few ap bad apples. Right? By defending the clearly wicked men, they too were as rotten as can be. So the battle raged on, and the tribe of Benjamin was almost destroyed, save a couple hundred people. Now, I hope it's clear that I do not ascribe to the few bad apples notion. Because we're not... Yes, I'm sure they're, they, they are the ones that committed the act. They should be held responsible. And it's not fair to, you know, to... Uh, to, what's the word? Punish the rest for the few. But neither do I agree with the idea that, the, like, like I said, I don't agree with the wholesale removal either. Because in this story, clearly there are few more than a few bad apples. But neither was it the answer to kill off all the Benjaminites. Because the verse doesn't say that the rest... There was no king in Israel, and the people of Benjamin did whatever they saw fit, while the rest of Israel stayed faithful. It doesn't say that the Benjaminites, the few people, were the problem that Israel was facing. So if they can just get rid of them, Israel's problem will be solved. And this is because the idea of bad apples could lead to a, a blame game, and it takes the responsibility away from personal choices and it become and, and objectifies individuals who you know might have made who in in whose situation if we had been there we might have made the same choices you see the problem was bigger than just a few people or even a single tribe the whole nation had left the way of life, God's way of life, and everyone was doing whatever they felt was right. And in the end, it almost resulted in the loss of a single tribe. Loss of a single tribe. You see, problems happen in society, not because there are a few bad people, but because most people in general do whatever looks good to them. You see, problems are like come up when the results of people doing whatever they right, think is right affects other people, hurts other people, that's when we start looking at it as, as a problem. You see, you know, I don't really think about what you do on a regular basis as long as you don't affect me, right? As long as you're not hurting me. That's what we do naturally. In America, we are free to do live as we wish, as long as we're not hurting other people. But if we're used to just doing whatever we think is right without regards to how it may impact other people, then we are, in a way, stepping closer and closer and closer to a situation like this. <clears throat> you see... It doesn't, when we, the Bible, when the Bible says that everyone was doing what is right in their own eyes, it didn't mean that they were evil people, right? And simply means that in their decision-making process, right, they weren't thinking of what God says is right or wrong. God's word wasn't the filter through which they processed the options before them. 
They were making decisions based on whatever they felt was right. And oftentimes, too late, we find out that, that we didn't really calculate the impact of, of how our decisions hurt or benefit other people. We live our lives based on whatever we think will bring us greatest profit. You see, a broken system neglected the apples that went bad. Had the Israelites in general internalized the law into their hearts, as God said they should, this would not have happened. Had the Benjaminites cared a little bit more of how God wanted them to live, how God wanted them to treat other people, according to the law as is found in the books of Moses, they would not have been found you know, risking the very existence of their tribe in their effort to defend the men who are clearly in the wrong. Oftentimes, I have seen society as well as individuals criticize the wrong actions of an individual or a group that they did nothing to prevent. The tribal leaders pointed to the tribe of Benjamin as the epitome of evil in that generation, while they failed to realize that they too were in the save, same wavelength. Are there bad apples? Yes. But we know from empirical evidence that if there is a rotten apple in a crate, the ethylene gas from that rotten apple has permeated the whole crate. And unless we do something about it, the rest of the crate will go bad faster than we expect. Now, I'm not, am I saying not pun to not punish the you know, rotten apple? No, let's, we need to take it out, right? We, for the safety of the rest, we need to t people need to take responsibilities for their own actions. Yes. But we cannot underestimate the impact that we have on each other, right? And the impact that that individual had on us. Just because we're all apples doesn't mean that we should defend rotten apples. This, you know, they're, they're, we need to do something, like I said, to prevent the rapid ripening and the rottening of other apples. But throwing them all away isn't an option, or right? isn't the answer. And we will see in the rest of the Bible that this act of almost destroying the tribe of Benjamin, right, doesn't fix Israel's problem, right? Had the tribal leaders of Israel had been, had they been right, then when they destroyed these men who did these things and they ki almost killed off the tribe of Benjamin, then we should find the evil in Israel stopping, after we punish the few bad apples in our society, we should find such actions stopping. But we don't. Right? The Israelites follow the path of disregard for God again and again, worshiping idols and burning children to appease the idols. So should God have just destroyed all of Israel? Would that have fixed the problem? The Bible presents to us not one or the other. It doesn't say just punish the bad apples. It doesn't say get rid of apples altogether. But the Bible tells us that there is a different solution. Right? God has a different option. He intends to save the apples. He intends to redeem them and bring them to the point, right, where God can bring the Messiah through them. And I hope that you can see that third option. And I hope that you and I could take part in that third option. Because with God, He could restore even the rotten apples. And so we will begin to see the solution to these problems starting in the book of Ruth as we will see in the next in tomorrow's sermon. And I pray that you will see that clearly and you will embrace that in your life as well. Because we all need to learn to be a little closer to the picture that God has for our lives today. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for this story and for reminding us that it's not one or the other. 
um, that, is, that there's a third way, that you, your way is best. Help us to see that through the, the sermons that we will see for the rest of our experience together. And may we embrace that for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.